There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, aboran, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, chromium, lithium, beryllium, and barium. What I'm going to do in this video is basically cover more or less what we covered in the last video, but we'll focus on the equations you need to know, because the point talks about the equations you need to know for your actual ozone. And I want to go over quickly again what ozone was as well and what it does. But I'll start with the actual dot point. So I'll read the dot point. It says, present information from secondary sources to write the equations. You need to be able to write the equations that show the reactions involving CFCs and ozone. Demonstrate the removal of ozone from the atmosphere. Right? So it's asking you to be able to know those equations. And we're going to cover those equations. And we're also going to cover two new equations, which you don't need to remember. But they're really important for you to be able to understand and appreciate because they're the equations which show you why CFCs don't only destroy 1,000 to 10,000 molecules and not unlimited amounts of molecules. Those two new equations will show you why chain reaction stops eventually. Right? So we'll talk about CVCs again. CVCs were your chlorofluorocarbons. Right? CFC11 is the one which is most commonly used. It had a ozone depletion potential of 1, so ODP of 1. What was ozone again? Ozone was a shield that prevented UVB radiation from entering the troposphere, prevented UVB radiation, and UVB radiation was what caused skin cancer, what was caused crop yields, so plant growth stopping, it was what destroyed or damaged PVC polymers by attacking the chlorine bond. So UVB was quite damaging, and ozone is what is there to absorb it. That's the function of ozone. Now, these three equations are the ones I mentioned last video, and they show you how these CVCs will actually combine in the stratosphere to cause damage by destroying ozone. Right? So the first equation was our CFC reacting with UV, UV radiation, and it's going to be UV, UVB radiation. The reason why that's important is because Actually, UVA so UVA radiation does get all the way through. Lots of it, UVA radiation is not that not, not that harmful, but it doesn't actually react with CFCs. So you need to for uh, the UV radiation to be able to react with our CVCs. The actual CVC has to get all the way into our into our ozone layer because that's where actually the UVB radiation will be. So once it gets into that ozone layer, it's going to react with UVB UVB radiation, and that's where this will happen. So these two product, these two reactants would react to form this, but more specifically a chlorine radical. So this is a chlorine radical, and this is the problematic part. So in the first step, we've got our CFC11 reacting with UVB radiation, forming chlorine radical. On the second step, we have that chlorine radical, which was formed in the first step, reacting with ozone. So this was our ozone. And that breaks down the actual ozone and forms oxygen, which won't absorb UVB radiation. So now we have a problem. We have less absorption happening because you, ozone, um, oxygen doesn't do the same thing as ozone. And we also have this new radical forming. This radical itself is relatively harmless to ozone. But what we're going to see in the next step is, as I mentioned last few, we have these, in the ozone layer, we will now have these chloro-oxygen radicals because they formed from the third step, a uh, second step, that's where they formed. But because in the ozone layer, we also have oxygen splitting into two oxygen radicals. That also happens in the ozone layer. We're also going to be able to find some of these oxygen radicals in that same layer. And what's going to happen when these two meet, so when, when our chlorine oxygen radical meets with our oxygen radical, when these two meet, we're going to have oxygen molecules being formed. That's not a massive problem, but the problem is we're going to have that same radical, the chlorine radical, which was formed in the first step and which destroyed our ozone in the second step, being reformed in the third step. Right? And that means it's an actual chain reaction. So you can see it's, it's going to keep happening. right? So it's going to keep breaking down ozone because this will not end. Right? This is a chain reaction. And I just said it won't end, and that's actually partially wrong. So this is a chain reaction, which means it will happen over and over again, and it will actually end. It will probably end after the, this one molecule of CFC broke down about, about 1,000 to 10,000 of these molecules of ozone. Because it can actually stop when two things happen, right? Either we have a chlorine radical meeting methane. This is methane here. 
then there, there's going to be some very slight amount of methane. So there's going to be a bit of, I'm going to draw it with this gray dot. There's going to be a bit of methane in an ozone layer as well, not much, but every now and then a chlorine radical will meet not an ozone molecule, which would be bad, but they will, every now and then it will meet a methane, um, sort of normal methane gas molecule. And these are all gases. And remember, even though I'm not always writing the state of matter, just because I have less space, I want to make it more clean, but most of these are all gaseous because we're obviously in the atmosphere. So we're going to have a chlorine radical meeting a methane sort of molecule. And what's going to happen is we're going to have hydrogen chloride forming. Hydrogen chloride, again, also gaseous. And we're going to have a new radical forming. But this radical is not dangerous. So it's not harmful to ozone. This is not harmful to ozone. And because this here, the hydrogen chloride, is not an actual radical, that means the, the chain reaction has stopped. So if chlorine does not meet ozone, but meets a methane molecule, that means the chain reaction has stopped. But because it's so little methane, it usually means it's going to take a long time for that to happen. And it's usually going to mean that the actual CFC molecule, the original CFC molecule, would have had time to destroy probably tens to thousands of, to, thousands to tens of thousands of ozone molecules. So that's the first thing that could happen. That's how the chain reaction could stop. Another way it could stop is by this product. So this is the chlorine oxygen radical, and which comes from that second step. So you can see here, this is the second step. And after second step, obviously we have chlorine, re chlorine radicals being reformed in the third step. So if we can prevent this from ha reforming the chlorine radical, then we can also stop the chain reaction, right? So we're trying to have this being removed before it can reform the chlorine radical. And the way this can happen is if we have this chlorine oxygen radical, not meeting an oxygen radical, right, but instead meeting a nitrogen dioxide molecule. So if those two meet, if chlorine or an oxygen radical meets with, an, with a nitrogen dioxide molecule, what will happen is we're going to have chlorine nitrate forming. So this is chlorine nitrate. And this chlorine nitrate is also harmless to our ozone. So what I just talked about, the first three steps, the ones in pink, are the ones you should know. So you should know these three steps. And that's how ozone can keep destroying, uh, sorry, how CFCs can keep destroying ozone by first having UV radiation pop off a chlorine molecule. And this chlorine molecule is now chlorine radical, which will attack ozone in the second step and form this relatively harmless chlorine oxygen radical. But the problem is in the third step, this, this relatively harmless chlorine oxygen radical can combine with an oxygen radical to form oxygen and reform a chlorine radical. So this can then means that if once this chlorine radical is reformed, step two takes place again and the whole thing keeps happening over and over again. And ozone keeps being broken down. But I also said that instead of these step two and three happening, what could happen is we could have either a chlorine radical meeting a methane molecule, which means hydrogen chloride is formed and a harmless radical of methane is formed, that means the chain reaction stops, or we could have the chlorine, um, chlorine oxygen radical, being this one here, reacting not with oxygen, an oxygen radical, but instead with a nitrogen dioxide radical, and what that means is so a nitrogen dioxide molecule, not a radical, and when that happens, that means we're going to have chlorine nitrate being formed, and that also stops the chain reaction because chlorine nitrate doesn't harm the ozone. So these two equations you don't actually need to remember, but you should know, you should understand, or you should appreciate that that's how the chain reaction can stop. And that's what you should appreciate with these two. But you need to know the first three steps. These are important. This is what this dot point is all about. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.